place was called Superla Spa. It was a full service establishment. Massage tables, salon chairs, mud baths, etc. The explosion went off a little after three. The squad car was two blocks away when the place went up, so the fire department was able to respond within four minutes. Not that it helped. The place was fully engulfed by the time they arrived. They were just lucky to keep it contained to just this building. I didn't know there was a spa down here. The building's been here since the late 70s, but it's only been a spa since 98. The gentleman in the corner there is Pete Baja. His company owns the Pearl Spa. I took a statement, but you'll want to follow up with the two. Have you two met yet? Not officially. I'm Sarah Seidel. The team speaks very highly of you. You want to take that interview? Hi, Pedro Baja. Baja, like Baja, California. But call me Pete. Everyone does. Well, almost everyone. You in charge of this place, Pete? I'm the CEO of Miel LLC. It's less impressive than it sounds. It's basically a holding company for a few mom and pop style businesses that were worth rescuing when the original owners wanted out. The company owns Super La Spa what's left of it. We'll have to notify the claims adjuster when we've released the scene. Actually, this is kind of embarrassing, but the policy on this place has lapsed. You let the fire insurance on one of your businesses expire? It's complicated. We sent them a payment, but they said they didn't get it. Then they wanted us to pay a late fee and raise our premium. I mean, we've done business with them for years, and now they decide to penalize us over a little slip-up? I have some things I need to take care of. Here's my card, at least until the next board meeting. You can reach me at my office. Take samples of soot from all around this place to see if we can find traces of an accelerant. get one more sample of soot after this one. We'll have enough. We've gathered soot from all over this place. Should be enough. One mud bath contains a lot more mud than the others. It might just be the way they do it. But the one next to it is filled only up to the line on the side of the tub. That mud is baked solid. We're going to need a way to examine it inside and out without actually breaking it up and compromising potential evidence. You know, the other day, Catherine was telling me that we have access to an industrial ultrasound device. It sounds perfect for this problem. I'll give her a call. away from its frame. Drywall is usually fire resistant. Those holes could be there to let more air fan the fire and get to that wooden frame underneath. That could indicate arson. 
but we'll need a lot more evidence to prove it. Now we're living in the future. I'm still waiting for my flying car, but seeing through walls isn't too shabby. I have a rough idea, but remind me again how the device works. Just turn it on and point the wand at whatever you want to scan. The sound waves it emits penetrate at different speeds depending on the density of the material. And the onboard computer translates that into a picture, is that right? You got it. I don't think I need to tell you to be careful with it, but be careful with it. that look like a human body to you? It looks like we have a victim after all. I'll call Doc Robbins for a pickup. Cleaning her off is just the first step. This is going to take a while. I'll give you a call when I have something for you. Let's head back to the crime scene. See what else we can turn up. This thing was on last night, we could have our ignition source. It's hard to tell what this was. Not much left of it. Judging from the charring in the inside of the oven, it was in there for long enough to catch fire. It's almost like a timed fuse. So far, that's two things that point to arson. We'll need more evidence to be sure. style ceiling. Hold your breath while you're taking that sample. If it's as old as it looks, it's probably got asbestos in it. I don't think we're going to pull any prints off of that. We can't just pick that up. We can't just pick that up. What makes you think there would be latent fluids there? Look at the crimping along the edges of the split gas line. I'd say it was cut. That's the third sign of possible arson we found. I'm almost convinced.
We need to figure out what caused this fire. Looks like Mr. Baja isn't here, but we could always knock. No answer. The break room contains carbon, acetone, and T-butyl mercaptan. That's the odorant they use in natural gas. Acetone is sometimes used as an accelerant. We should test the rest of the soot we've collected. Lots of carbon, some acetone, and trace amounts of T-butyl mercaptan. That's the second sample of soot to contain acetone. Let's keep analyzing the soot samples we've collected. I think we're onto something. It's mostly carbon, but there are traces of volcanic minerals and acetone. The mud at the spa is made of volcanic ash, but the acetone is an anomaly. We have acetone, a known accelerant, and samples of soot taken from every room in the spa. We've got a gas leak that looks to be the result of tampering. The drywall here has been ventilated to get around its natural fireproofing. And then there's this acetone residue over every inch of the place. Throw a muffin in the toaster oven at 450 degrees. Then just leave it in there without setting the timer. Sounds like a recipe for arson. Hey there, it's Dr. Robbins. Just wanted to let you know I've completed the autopsy on your burn victim. Hey, Doc, we got your call. All right, let's begin. Well, her bikini probably left no room for imagination, nor an ID, but I did collect her fingerprints and DNA for you. Take a look at the third degree burns on your victim's hands and face. You can probably tell that they were above the surface of the mud during the initial explosion and subsequent fire. In addition to the burns to her skin, she suffered thermal injury to her upper airway. She inhaled a substantial amount of smoke and hot gases from the fire. Carboxyhemoglobin levels in her blood exceeded 73%. 
cause of death was suffocation due to carbon monoxide poisoning. In a fire that intense, carbon monoxide levels would spike rapidly. She probably fell unconscious pretty quick. Most likely, she slipped under the mud after losing consciousness. Time of death is going to be difficult to determine, even without the fire. The initial temperature of the mud bath complicates my ability to offer an accurate estimate. I was able to extract samples of the vitreous humor from both eyes. Potassium accumulation in the tissue indicates time of death between 3 and 4 a.m. That's consistent with when the fire started. Not exactly, but take a look at this bruising on her arm. Does that look like a handprint to you? Yeah. Looks like someone grabbed her pretty hard. From the coloration of the bruising, I'd say it occurred at least 6 to 12 hours prior to death. I certainly find no indication she was lying in that mud over a prolonged period of time. We need to get a photo of those bruises. My camera's memory card is full. You mind documenting this one? I'll wait. Nice composition. Maybe. Your victim had advanced mesothelioma. It's a type of cancer that attacks the lining of the vital organs. It's thought to be caused most often by exposure to asbestos. It looks as though it was an ongoing problem for her. I discovered indications of a pleurectomy, the removal of the outermost lining of the lungs. From the scar tissue, that surgery probably took place a few years ago. She may have thought she was out of the woods. Unfortunately, I found an active malignancy in her pericardium, the lining of her heart. She didn't have long to live. Well, the pleurectomy obviously suggests at one point she knew she had cancer. But there's no way to know whether she was aware it had recently metastasized to her heart. I ran an expanded tox screen. She hadn't been taking any cancer medications, and I didn't find any tissue damage from possible radiation treatments. I did, however, find evidence of a persistent, dare I say, habitual use of cannabis. You know, a Harvard Medical School study concluded that one of the active chemicals in marijuana, THC, may in fact inhibit the growth of certain tumor classifications. Even though it says right there in the press release that the growth of some other tumors might actually be accelerated by THC. A man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest, right? So now the idea that weed cures cancer is spreading far and wide. Our victim's not an aphis.
She's not in CODIS. Our Jane Doe doesn't seem to be in the system. Maybe Pete Baja knows her. Hey, you two. I just got back. What do you need? We found an unidentified female victim in one of the mud baths at the spa. God. Orsha. No! Orsha Wiseman. She's... She's the manager at the spa. She's the only other one with a key. Just the thought that she might have been in there when it went up. I'm sorry. It's just horrible. We can't be sure who she is until we get a positive identification. Of course. Uh, let me lock up here. Oh, Porsche. No. What were you doing in there? Actually, we were hoping you could help us shed some light on that. Would you mind answering a few more questions? I... Uh, sure. She mentioned any kind of health problems or filed any sort of complaint against your company. No, nothing like that. Why? She had mesothelioma, a type of cancer caused by asbestos. Oh, that's horrible, but what does it have to do with my company? I don't know anything about any asbestos. I don't know anything about asbestos, or where she might have run into it. Think back. Did she ever seem unusually angry or depressed? Well, we weren't exactly close, but I got the feeling she was in a troubled relationship. Little things here and there, really. Such as? One Friday, I asked her if she had any fun plans for the weekend. Not really, she said, just hanging out with the boyfriend. She said it like it was a, a root canal or something. It wasn't just that. I think he hit her. Why do you think that he hit her? Well, Portia always seemed to like showing off her body. I even had to ask her once to wear more than just her bikini to work. But one week, a while back, I can't remember exactly when, she wore long sleeve shirts every day, and she seemed depressed. When I asked her about it, she gave me some lame excuse about needing to do laundry. But when she thought I wasn't looking, I saw her rub her arm and wince. Well, Portia was a very private person. I know almost nothing about her boyfriend, except what I was able to infer. Was the spa making money? Sure. I mean, it can always get better, right? But it was profitable. Is there anyone you can think of who might have had a reason to start the fire at the spa? No. I mean, who blows up a spa? She's not in the phone book. I looked. Oh yes, I know where she lived. Let me write it down for you. Never got the chance to visit her. Here you go. So, I hate to ask, but is that everything you need from me right now? I have to come up with something to tell the board about why I let the insurance or not. Uh, and I can't really focus on that while I'm here. I think we have what we need for now. You'll be at the barber shop if we need you? I may have some errands to run, but I will be there for some time today, for sure. Lab. Drop the weapon now! 12 license says Brian Reed. 
You mind telling us why you were in Portia Weissman's apartment, Mr. Reed? It's my girlfriend's apartment. Well, ex-girlfriend as a as a yesterday. Do you break into all your ex-girlfriend's apartments? What? No, I didn't break in. I have a key. Come on, the door was bashed open and you were standing there with a sledgehammer. The door was busted in when I got there. So I grabbed the tool just in case the guy who broke in was still hanging around. Hey, just call Portia. She's angry with me, but she'll back me up. A fire? Oh, God. Is she okay? Unfortunately, Miss Weissman never made it out of the mud bath. The mu You mean she it, it can't be! Mr. Reed, we're sorry for your loss. A fire. So were you tying up loose ends after you torched the spa? What? That's crazy! The only loose ends I was tying up were my toothbrush and an extra pair of underwear. And now you tell me she's gone and, and you're acting like I had something to do with it? Mr. Reed, Brian, we have no evidence implicating you right now. And we know it must be a shock to hear about Portia. We need your help to figure out what happened to her. I hope you can understand why we want to know the reason you were standing there with that thing. Sure, yeah, I can see how it looks. But really, it's just like I told you. I stopped by to pick up my stuff, yeah, including the, the hammer, and the door was broken open. I grabbed the, the, the tool for protection on the way inside. It was just inside the door. I wasn't there for more than a minute before you two showed up. You mentioned that, as of yesterday, you and Portia were no longer together. Was this a mutual decision? Or did Portia break up with you? No, I broke it off with her. She... her... her drug problem was getting in the way. Weed. She knew I couldn't... She knew I had a problem with it, but she kept putting it in my face. But maybe if... Maybe if... Maybe she'd still be alive. Oh, God. Did you hit her? Hit her? No! Absolutely not! I would never hurt her! Come on, Brian, I get it. She got a little out of line, right? So you had to shake a little sense into her. It wasn't like that. She just, you know, liked it a little rough sometimes. Look, it's not really my kind of thing, but she made it worth my while. Cancer patients are sometimes prescribed medicinal marijuana to help them cope with the side effects of treatment. Cancer? Well, that may have started a habit, but her cancer's been in remission for years. The autopsy found mesothelioma in the lining of her heart. She didn't have long. But she never told... I, I didn't know. She never told me. Can anyone verify your location between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m.? I don't think so, no. I was at home hanging out with my buddy Jack for most of the night. But by then, Jack was gone, and I was pretty much passed out on my couch. Can your buddy Jack confirm your story? Well, I try not to ask the bottle too many questions. People look at me funny. What do you do for a living, Brian? A uh, living? I, uh, I'm kind of between jobs right now. I'm looking for something in construction, but I'm not having a lot of luck. I do have a couple of leads, so, so ask me in a week, maybe. We might have some more questions for you soon. Would you mind waiting? I might as well. You probably won't get much out of me once I have a chance to start drinking. Jim, could you do a background check on Brian Reed? I called it in on the way over. I'll let you know what turns up. Let's head back to Portia Weissman's apartment. Maybe there's some evidence there that can link the break-in to the fire. pulled out at the root. Portia was a blonde, and Brian Reed has red hair. Someone else was here. This isn't just a hammer. It looks like something off a fire truck. Hey, I read a background on Brian Reed. Turns out that up until last week, he was a captain with the Las Vegas Fire Department. His battalion chief told me Reed had a mixed service record, multiple commendations for bravery, but the guy was also on probation for insubordination. Well, when Reed failed a random drug test last week for the use of cannabis, they fired him. This reminds me. 
the notorious serial arsonist John Leonard Orr was both a fire captain and an arson investigator. Mr. Reed, or should I call you Captain Reed? Not anymore. I'm no longer with the Las Vegas Fire Department. I bet you've seen a lot of buildings burn, and I bet you know a lot of ways to light them up. You know something, buddy? You are way to hell out of line! I devoted my life to jumping into the flames and saving people! And I lost friends in those buildings I've seen burn. So for you to sit there and insinuate that I may be an arsonist is the most offensive thing anyone has ever said to me. And Porsche? You think I set Porsche on fire? I mean, I don't know what kind of animals you people have to deal with, but that's not me. Being a firefighter was obviously very important to you. So it must have hurt to lose that. Yeah, well, they were just looking for an excuse. I was actually trying to keep my head down. You were on probation. It was a tenement fire in the alphabets. Italian chief thought the place was coming down. Ordered me not to go back in. You'd think I might earn a little slack for telling the boss to piss off, but let me save a room full of kids. And again, if I'd stopped at piss off, maybe I would've. Wasn't Portia the one with the drug problem? Yeah, it was her problem. And she's the reason I got fired. Portia made pot brownies. Now, she says she didn't dose me intentionally, but she did leave the damn things right where I would find them, and she didn't tell me what they were. I ate three of them. I could barely get out of bed for like a day and a half. I don't know how she... I don't know how anyone can stand that stuff. And then, as if that wasn't bad enough, Happy Monday! Go pee in a cup! I dumped her because she got me fired from a job I loved. It's a firefighting tool, isn't it? It's called a Denver tool. Firefighters use it for getting into and out of places. Places like apartments? Only if they're on fire. We think you used your Denver tool to break Porsche's door in. I told you, I got a key! Look, take it if you need it! What's that all about? We meant to show you something else, right? I told you, I got a key! Thanks for sticking around. No problem. I'll be waiting. here are thin and straight, but some are circular, just like the holes in the drywall at the spa. I told you, I got a key! Yeah, so some idiot chopped up the door, so what? You. I got a key. Yeah, so some idiot chopped up the door. So what? We 
have to document and collect that shoe impression without destroying it. A photograph should be enough. We need to find a shoe that matches this impression. It's made out of some kind of dirt. We should get a sample. down there I told you I got a key looks like he's still not here answer. Case is open, and the hard drive is missing.
don't think we're going to pull any prints off of that. We can't just pick that up. What makes you think there would be latent fluids there? That's not going to work. We can't just pick that up. We can't just pick that up. I don't think we're going to pull any prints off of that. That won't get you what you want. That's not going to work. That won't get you what you want. shoe impression to someone, then this dirt might tell us where he's been. made up of feldspar, clinopyroxene, and acetone. The minerals are found in volcanic ash, which is what they used to make the mud for the baths. And acetone was the accelerant used at the spa.
No answer. No answer. We looked everywhere, tested everything, asked every question we can think of. We must be missing something. I'm just not sure what it could be. Denver tour to match to the markings on Portia Weissman's door. I told you, I got a key. You see those marks? They line up perfectly with your Denver tool. Mine or anybody else's. Even if it was a Denver tool, no firefighter did that. If I really wanted to bring that door down, I'd pry the hinges off. The last thing I'd do is hack at it like a maniac. Thanks for sticking around. No problem. I'll be waiting. <laughs> 